there's nothing you can do in this kind of situation. Nobody's prepared for this kind of event. And we were quite numb. And we were just speechless, silent, watching. It, it was horrifying, but my, my immediate thought was, this is the, this is the start of a, of a full-scale war. Hello, I'm Hillary Neal, a journalism and digital media major at Ashland University. Welcome to 9-11 Remembered. Our university, like many others across America, was shocked and forever changed by the events of September 11, 2001. For the 10th anniversary, we gathered members of the AU community to reflect on that tragic Tuesday morning. At some point I went walking through the building for something and noticed people kind of gathered around and huddled around the, uh, some of the television screens. It was break time and uh, I was just downstairs going and getting a panini uh, from one of the Italian bakers and he had the television on. He was very upset, and, but my Italian was horrible at the time so I couldn't really quite understand what, and he just pointed to the television and said, look, look. All of a sudden, the phone rang and that was just as I was about to go and check my emails. And I always check the BBC News and get the headlines from home. I was listening to a sports talk show, and uh, the talk host broke in with a story that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. Like a lot of people, my tendency was to assume it was an accident. In fact, the way that they were talking about it on the news, it was as if it was a, a Cessna, some, some pilot had flown off course and, and or fallen asleep or something and flown into it. Someone came in and said that a plane had hit one of the buildings in New York, and that it was somehow serious and uh, we were almost finished with the class anyway so I just, um, this was about nine o'clock I think, just after nine. And so I, I uh, dismissed class. I, I turned the, the radio on, um, it was in my car as I was headed back to campus when I learned that it was far, far bigger than what I had been led to believe. I went in and turned the TV on and saw the image and realized that it wasn't a small plane, clearly the damage was significant. Um, so I started watching to see what was happening, just like everybody else did. And it was while we were watching it in, in, uh, in Amstutz that the second tower came down. Uh, and, and it was roughly at that time that the university uh, announced that they were canceling classes for the day. We then started to try and call New York to try and get hold of our friend and make sure he was okay. And of course, nothing. No one could get through to anything. You know, we were just sort of perplexed at first and gosh, that's so bad because one plane had hit a building, World Trade Center. But then a few minutes after we got there, I'm, I, I'm not sure how, how long after, two, five minutes, um, the second plane had hit. And then the, the um, atmosphere and the the reactions of those watching television, most of them were students, changed entirely and they started weeping. And we were quite numb. We were just speechless, silent, watching. I also remember weeping, absolutely. And in part, I think the shocking thing was that got me emotionally more than anything else is when there were, this is all before the buildings crashed, uh, which was entirely another feeling altogether, frankly, um, is, is when, I, when there was some close-ups of the World Trade Center after the planes had crashed and before the, the buildings had collapsed, that you, where you, wherein you noticed that specks of dust seemed to be falling from the building and that they turned out to be people jumping, you know, 80 floors high or whatever because they, 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 that, that's, that was shocking. Reports kept coming about a plane in Pennsylvania, uh, uh, a plane flying into the Pentagon. And at that point, you really wondered, oh my God, how, how, what, what's next? Uh, when is this going to stop? You can't remember what you were supposed to do. Um, and you just think, well, what can I do? I want to do something. I want to be able to help. And there was nothing anybody could do other than stay home and keep yourself safe and 
be ready if, if somebody told you we need you to do this? So I was uh, shocked because like I said, I had just gotten back from New York uh, that a uh, few days before that. And I had been in the World Trade Center uh, at the top on the previous uh, Sunday. Well, I suppose like everyone was just sort of stunned. Just like, you know, is this really happening? What's really happening? And, and, and nobody understood, of course, how things were going to play out over the rest of that day and the next couple of days. At the time, we, we heard about the towers, but then, um, you know, those, those fell. And in addition to that, we heard about the, the hijacked planes and, and the Pentagon. And it just seemed like the world was falling right then. And so, as you can imagine, I'm sure you remember, everybody was just kind of in a state of shock. The view of, of, the, of the towers crashing, I mean, it was just extraordinary. I mean, it might as well have been nuclear weapons, where I could tell it psychologically to me or other people. So anger at that point, boy, whoever did, the, did this um, should pay. I think the personal fear uh, started to take over that because you really didn't know at what point uh, things would end uh, and, and how powerful were they. And you know, could they do this the next day? Uh, could they do it in a week again? It was horrifying, but my, my immediate thought was this is the, this is the start of a, of a full-scale war. I didn't get angry. I was never angry that day. I just felt really sad because I knew this is just the beginning of the violence. This is not going to be the end. Like the professors, students had their own personal reactions to the terrorist attacks of that day. Jess Baker, a media major and student TV news producer, had just recently been living three blocks from the World Trade Center. As the city she loved crumbled, she knew she had to be there. And we watched them, um, we watched the towers crash, um, just like in master control. And um, living there just three weeks before this had happened and so close, it was just like, you see those, that part of your life just you can't believe it. And I grabbed my best friend, who was also kind of the number two here, Laura, and I was like, well, maybe we'll go to Pennsylvania, because we had heard that something had crashed. And, and she had a car, I didn't have a car, and we got in her car, and we didn't even have real media passes. We got to Johnstown, and just as we were getting into Johnstown, they said it's Shanksville. They finally said where it was. So we hit there about 5.36, and there were police, but they let us, they let us through with these made up IDs that, I mean, but the guy just waved us through onto this dirt road. And so we were there and Tom Ridge was the governor at the time. And we listened to him speak about, you know, what, what had happened um, there and just about Flight 93 and how they, they at that time even thought that the passengers had fought back. And that's how, you know, it didn't turn back and go to the White House and whatnot. And so they had a tour um, two tour buses and we went on the second one because we had gotten there late. We didn't even really know we'd get there in time to see anything or even know he was going to be there. But we got on the tour bus and it was weird because we couldn't even, we couldn't even see anything. It was just this line of, line of smoked out trees basically because it was behind the tree line. And the sun had set, but it was just weird being in that field as the sun set in Shanksville on 9-11. Um, on this big tour bus with a couple other media people just looking at this, this line of what had happened. We went to maybe an Eaton Park somewhere in Pennsylvania and finally called our parents and told them where we were and both of our parents knew what thoughts we had. We, we didn't really tell them we were going to go to New York um, and I think we were a little scared to go. So we're still sitting in the Eaton Park and you know this is probably you know later probably eight, nine and I was like well want to go and so we decided to go. I remember we just drove and drove and it was dark and you're still hearing all the reports and whatnot and um, we drove we finally finally get there it was three or four it was three or four in the morning by the time we we got into Jersey. Oh the biggest thing I remember is we both just grab each other's hand I mean that was just I still get chills I will always get chills from seeing that smoke in the distance and just we we're the only people on we parked and got out of the car and then we watched the sun rise over the smoke on 912 right across from the towers and it's just yeah we just 
being there and seeing that and that I had lived there just so close to it, just so soon afterwards. National media was much obviously inside, but we are just these kids, you know, who had to see it for ourselves, but also students and the historic nature of it and having to be where it was and that's where we went. But yeah, definitely that it was just quiet. It was so quiet. I always wanted to do media and I always wanted to do TV and radio and, and I still, I, that's when Lauren and I got there, like days like that. I know is why I do what I do now. We got home, finally got back to Ashland. I remember calling my dad. He's like, I told you not to go, but I'm also really proud of you. So that was kind of neat. I felt like I had to be there, so I went, even though my parents told me not to. I didn't know anyone there, and I'm not from there, but you know, I did live there for a little bit of time, and in a time where I really grew up a lot. And to see a city that I loved, and um, and in a time of my life that I loved being in, to have that happen then, I, I, it, I took it personally, and I still, on the anniversaries, I still do, and it's hard, it's hard to explain to people, because we're not the story, but what we saw and what we felt and how personal it was. We will always have that together, just the two kids from Ashland University just saying we had to go and be there. Just her and me and her little Chrysler, uh, and seeing the smoke rising was just, I will always remember that. In the weeks following the attacks, the country changed dramatically. Patriotism blossomed, the Patriot Act became law, and the Department of Homeland Security was born. And we launched the War on Terror, which still continues today.